and welcome to Armchair Socialism, the show where we talk about communist theory written by bourgeois academics. I'm your host, Zapfino Dingbats. Today, we're going to be talking about the daddy of communism, Karl Marx. In the first chapter of his magnum opus, Das Kapital, Marx lays out the basis for the creation and exchange of commodities in capitalist societies. Now, Marx himself says that this is one of the most confusing sections in the entire book, so it helps to know beforehand that there are three major terms being explained here, use value, exchange value, and socially necessary labor time, or SNULT for short. Marx starts with the claim that capitalist societies are nothing more than an immense collection of commodities. To make sense of this, though, we first need to understand what a commodity is. Theoretically, any object made under capitalism would qualify, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to take one as a case study, say, spam. In order for something to be a commodity, it needs to have a use value and an exchange value. The use value of spam is, essentially, what it's useful for. Now, I'm pretty sure that you eat spam, so let's just say that its use value is as food to sustain a human being. This is what Marx calls the qualitative value of spam, essentially a fancy way of saying that it's a certain attribute unique to spam that makes it useful. In this case, the attribute would be that it is technically edible. If you instead tried to eat a hat, it wouldn't end well for you because a hat has a completely different use value. Okay, so now that we understand the use value of spam, let's take a look at its exchange value. In order to do that, though, we need to take spam out of isolation and instead place it in the capitalist marketplace. Let's pretend that Marx has one can of spam, but doesn't want to eat it. For him, the spam has no use value. It's cold, though, and Marx is like 200 years old, so he would really appreciate a hat. It just so happens that Che Guevara has a spare hat that he isn't using and would really like a can of spam. In order for them to exchange their different commodities, they need to decide on their relative value. Now, this relative value could be anything. Let's just say that in this case, one can of spam is worth four hats. In this instance, the exchange value of the spam is four hats, so Marx could trade one quarter of his spam for Che's hat. Let's pretend, though, that Che doesn't have a hat, but a Cuban cigar and that one cigar is worth two cans of Spam. Now, Marx can only trade his can of Spam for half a cigar. In this case, the exchange value of the Spam is half a cigar. This is what Marx calls the quantitative value of the Spam, essentially how much of another thing it's worth. As we can see in this example, the amount of another commodity Spam is worth varies greatly depending on what the other commodity is. In fact, if we use the transitive property, we know that four hats is also equal to half a cigar, and therefore these commodities are all interchangeable, all have the same exchange value. If we want to understand why these objects are interchangeable though, we need to look at socially necessary labor time. SNULT is, essentially, how long it takes the average worker to make a certain commodity in a certain society under certain average conditions. So. Let's say Marx is working in a spam factory. It takes him one hour to make a single can of spam. The snult of spam is, in that case, one hour. Now, the important part of this process is that a human spent time laboring on an object so that it might be usable. Because labor was spent on spam, it has a use value. If, instead, Marx just sat in the factory and did nothing for an hour, there would be no spam for him to trade only a puddle of mush on the floor. Similarly, the amount of time it takes to make the product becomes its exchange value. Since we know that four hats have the same exchange value as one can of spam, that means that if Che spends one hour working in a hat factory, he will produce four hats, and that the snult of each individual hat is 15 minutes. To follow the example through, we know one cigar is worth two cans of spam, so its socially necessary labor time is two hours, and half a cigar takes one hour to make. Now what happens in a capitalist marketplace, when there is an almost infinite number of exchanges taking place simultaneously, is that the people exchanging those commodities 
become abstracted so that it appears as if the commodities exchange themselves. Inevitably, this also means that the commodities themselves will become abstracted until from the outside, capitalism looks like the unending circulation of exchange value. If that sounds ridiculous, just listen to this CEO talk about car sales for one minute. Let, let me first uh, get these sales numbers. You're going to break them with us, and it was a pretty darn good march for Audi. It was a great march. We're excited. Uh, second best month in the history of the brand. We did see 17,102 Audis, 20% up versus last year. So uh, we're really rocking and rolling. Brand is hot, and uh, feels good to be 20% up. So what are you set for uh, for the full year? Was this just a big pop, uh, or, or is that the kind of growth that we can expect from Audi going forward? Look, we're not a brand that likes to be chaotically up and down. If you look at us the last five years, five consecutive years of record sales, we've always been 12, 13, 14 percent up. That's our consistent business model, but I can pretty much guarantee this will be our sixth consecutive record year, and uh, market's really responding. On that note, goodbye for now. I'm Zapfino Dingbats, and remember kids, socialism is when the government does stuff.